Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for joining us. This is Parker from TestPrepChampions.com. Now, you probably clicked on this video because you're studying for the GED math test or you know somebody that is and you're wondering about the calculator. So you might be wondering what kind of calculator are you going to be able to use on the test? For the GED, do you have to buy your own? Will one be provided for you? How many questions do you have to know how to do by hand? How many questions can you use the calculator for? And how often should you use the calculator? So I'm going to give a quick rundown of everything you really need to know about the calculator. But I also wanted to address a question from mgoblue4057 who asks, I'm doing a program for studying for math and it keeps showing me not to use the calculator, but I want to use the calculator because can't you use a calculator for all of the tests besides the first five questions? I would think I should be using a calculator and getting used to it. Ding, 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 we've got a winner here. So it sounds like you're on to uh, a really good insight, all right, um, that a lot of students never really think about. So I'm going to address that and answer your question, but let me just give a quick rundown for those that are just joining us that are just starting their GED studying and don't know how the calculator works. So you don't have to buy a calculator for the test. There's going to be one provided to you on screen, okay? So the calculator you can get is the TI-30XS, okay? And you can get it on Amazon or your local bookstores, uh, definitely your college university bookstores, if there's one nearby you. They should have it. You could also probably find it on eBay. That's the TI-30XS, and if you're able to buy it, it's not that expensive. If you can get it, I would recommend using it and practicing with it. But if you're not able to, just know that you'll be able to use one on screen when you get into the test and it's going to be basically identical okay so you're going to have five questions that you're going to have to know how to do by hand the rest of the test which the rest of the questions are going to be 41 other questions that you can do with the calculator so so the original question here that i wanted to answer um, you know, it sounds like you're on to a really good insight here. And if you actually do the math, right, 41 out of 46 questions you can use your calculator for, which that comes out to about 90% of the test, all right? So, yeah, 90% of the test, roughly speaking, you'll be able to use the calculator for. So not only that, you're going to have to use the calculator for a lot of those questions. So it's not going to be an option. So a lot of students, there's kind of this, like, fear-mongering that goes on about the calculator, and a lot of students get all worked up and stressed out about it. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but, you know, I don't think it's your fault. I don't think it's other students' fault, necessarily, because they hear that they have to know how to do this stuff by hand, and they have to know how to use, do some questions without their calculator, and that is true. You are going to want to do some of your practicing by hand, okay? However, if you really look at the test and you really think about the test, 90% of it you can use the calculator for, okay? And, in fact, a lot of those questions, they're not meant to be done by hand. They're designed to be done with the calculator. The numbers on some of them are just going to be too weird to work out in your hand or to work out by hand. So you're going to have to. So you're going to have to use the calculator. It's going to be necessary for you to understand how to use the calculator, okay? So, yeah, you're right, okay? You are absolutely right here in your question saying that, you know, aren't basically what it sounds like you're getting at here is that most of the questions are going to be stuff that you can use the calculator for. So while you're studying, why should you spend your time trying to figure out all this stuff by hand, okay? And I, I'm not going to second guess your program because maybe I don't know what program it is. Maybe they've got their own reason or their own method for why they're having you do that. So I'm not going to, to second guess your program, but I'm just going to tell you that from my own experience, okay, I've tutored students. I've worked with hundreds, maybe even thousands of students, both in person and online for years. And from my own experience, okay, I... I always, always, always tell students, use that calculator as much as possible. Don't be afraid to use the calculator, okay? Go crazy with that calculator because you're going to you're gonna need to know how to do, use it. It's not like, it's not an option. Some of, like I said, a lot of those questions, okay, they're not designed to be done by hand. The first five questions are going to be designed to be done by hand. Those five questions, you're going to have to know. That's usually some kind of addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, simplifications, um, exponent, square roots. Now, it's pretty basic arithmetic. It's not simple. I'm not saying those questions are easy because sometimes those are some of the harder questions on the whole test. But it's basic stuff, okay, that you are you should be able to figure that out by hand. So you are right that you are going to have to practice some stuff by hand. And if you're using, like, a quality prep book, like, I'm not sure... Uh, what you're doing, like it, what your program is, but if you're doing like Kaplan, Princeton Review, or anything that's, and I'm not saying those materials are perfect, right, because nothing's perfect, but you know, the material on my website, whatever you're using to study, most of the, most of those quality materials are going to have, uh, in bold, they're going to tell you, like, before you do certain practice questions, they're going to say, oh, you may use a calculator for these questions, or you may not use a calculator for these questions. So just by doing practice questions and practice tests, you should, uh, if you're, Prep material is pointing out to you questions that you've got to practice by hand. 
Okay, just by doing those questions, by doing a handful of them, you should be pretty well prepared, I would say. Uh, most students say that they're well prepared just from, from doing that. Okay, so the majority of the questions definitely just, you know, just think of it like a gas pedal. If you want to go faster in the car, you slam that gas pedal down, right? Okay, if you want to go faster through the test, use that calculator like a gas pedal. Think of it that way. Okay, as long as you put the numbers in the calculator the right way, or if you're using the screen, like the on-screen calculator, as long as you enter the numbers in right, you're going to get it faster. Okay, what's easier, you know, punching four buttons in a calculator or writing something out by hand and figuring it out by hand? A lot of times, it's, you can do the calculation three times in the same time it's going to take you to write it out by hand or to do it in your head. Okay, and a good way to know, like when you're using the calculator, if you want to make sure you didn't make a mistake, just do it twice. Put the calculation in, hit the equal sign, clear it out, put the calculation in again, and if you get the same number, then you entered everything in right. But I, would, I wouldn't sweat it. I would honestly not sweat it. I wouldn't worry about it at all. Okay, now this might be counterintuitive to what your program's telling you or from what you've heard, but the reality is that you'll just look at the math, look at the facts, look at the numbers. 90% of your test, roughly speaking, is stuff that you don't need to calculate, stuff that you have to use the calculator for, or that you're able to use the calculator for. So, yeah, you're going to just don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. Use that calculator a lot. You're going to want to practice with that calculator. So I'm going to link to a tutorial down below if you're going to use the on-screen calculator or if you're using the real calculator. Uh, there's a tutorial that's awesome to, to explain how to do all the stuff that you need to know on your calculator. Now, there's a lot of other videos on YouTube and other websites where you can learn that. But definitely, as a test taker, I think it's your, if you want to do well, it's your responsibility to know how that calculator works before you get into that test. Okay, 90% of the test, roughly speaking, you're going to be able to use the calculator for. So you got to know how it works. You don't want to go in there and have the test be the first time that you've ever used the calculator. Because if that's the case, what usually happens is, you know, you've got to worry about how to answer all those questions on the test. But you don't also want to be trying to worry about how to use the calculator. You want to know how to do that. So, yeah, so keep, so practice some stuff in summary here to bring it in for a landing. Practice some of the questions uh, by hand. You're going to want to know how to do that, but don't sweat it. Okay, don't sweat it at all. You're going to save yourself a lot of time in your practice. You're going to save yourself a lot of time, period, on the test. It's going to go so much faster. You're not going to have to worry about running out of time if you know how to use that calculator. So use it as much as possible. Okay, use that calculator as much as possible. Don't sweat it because it's the, the majority of the test you can use it for and you should use it for. Okay, you should use it. Don't feel, don't feel stupid. Some students, like, they, they try to figure questions out by hand and I don't know why it's like they're you know it's admirable like the work ethic in the you know what they're trying to do I, I admire it and I applaud it but the, the the facts are just show it the facts show that it's a very small portion of the test is going to be done by hand so why spend why should you do most of your studying you know with pen and paper working everything out by hand that doesn't make any sense does it I mean it's just not logical when ninety percent of that test you can use the calculator for okay so we don't want to take this to the extreme and have you just do all your studying with the calculator. But at the same time, we don't want to go to the, the other extreme is almost worse, okay? Because if you just try to do everything by hand, you're going to slow yourself down and you're kind of missing, it's kind of misses the point, right? Because the first five or five of those questions on that test, they're designed to, by the test takers or the test writers to test your understanding of how to do the math by hand. The rest of that test, they're just trying to test your understanding of the math. They're trying to test you on how well you understand the math concepts, okay? If you know how to punch the numbers into the calculator and hit the equal sign and get the answer, that shows that you understand the process. You understand the basic skills, okay? So for most of that test, they're not testing you on how well you can write it out by hand. So don't try to do it that way, okay? Now, I'm not saying don't, you know, still write some stuff out by hand. And you can do a combination of both. That's what a lot of people do is they'll write some stuff out and use the calculator, um, you know. But I would, as much as you can, you just lay on that calculator like it's a gas pedal. Don't feel bad about using it because, you know, it might sound counterintuitive, but really, in reality, okay, you're just going to help you so much with your score. And everyone that I've seen that has the same kind of mindset about using that calculator as much as possible, they do really well. Okay, now I'm sure there's other opinions. There's other ways to do it. Some people don't do it that way, but I always tell students, use that calculator as much as you can. Don't feel bad about it. Have no shame. You should feel good about using that calculator because that shows that you understand the process. I mean, math is hard as it is anyway. Why would you want to make it harder on yourself by doing stuff by hand that you don't have to? Okay, so, you know, think think smart. You know, it's all the old work smarter, not harder type of thing. You know, you're gonna, you're just, just work smarter, you know, work the stuff out in the calculator as much as you can. 
it's going to save you time and you get the right answer. Don't do all that extra work when you don't have to. So, like I said, if you're using like a good quality prep material like a Kaplan or Princeton Review or just my material, whatever you want to use, most of the good materials, they're going to point out to you. They're going to say like, oh, you may use a calculator for this question or you may not use a calculator for this question. And most of the time, just by doing practice questions and practice tests, you'll get enough practice uh, at doing things by hand that you'll be, should be good to go for the real test, okay? Now, there's no guarantees in life, so that's not always the case, but more often than not, you should be, okay? So the main thing is, to, as, as you study, understand the process. Make sure you know how to get those questions right. Use the calculator as much as you can. Just get those questions right, okay? If you understand the process, you should be able to figure it out, it out by hand anyway, if you understand the process, okay? But that's the key thing. Make sure that you know how to get those questions right. So I wouldn't sweat it. In summary, use that calculator as much as you can. So I hope that this answers your question. Let me know if there's anything else I can explain for you. Um... And if anybody out there has a different opinion or a different take on this, let me know. But from as a test prep instructor and as the when I started testprepchampions.com in 2016, I've ran that for a couple of years. I've always seen students do better when they use the calculator a lot versus trying to do stuff by hand when it's just not worth the effort to. Okay, so that's the video. This is Parker from testprepchampions.com. If you like this video and you want more, don't be afraid to subscribe. In fact, please do and please hit that like button. Good luck with your studying.